Allah says in the Quran that every, every soul shall taste death. Allah does not care who you are, where you from. Allah does not care if you're strong. Allah does not care what city you're from. Allah does not care if you're even a prophet. Allah does not care that if you worship Allah for a hundred years, Allah says every soul shall taste death. And everyone will leave this world. You have the greatest people that ever walked on the face of this planet. They were none other than the prophets of Allah. You have the likes of Suleiman alayhi salam. As Abdullah says, radiallahu anhu, that when Suleiman alayhi salam, when he used to travel, he said he used to be sitting on a throne and these thrones used to be surrounding him. And the humans and the jinns used to be sitting around him. Behind him, there used to be animals. Above him, there used to be birds. They used to give him shade from the sunlight. The narration says that a tornado, a wind used to come and lift this whole army up and take them to a different land. In spite of the fact that Allah gave him this kingdom, Allah says every soul shall taste death and he departs from this world. You have the likes of Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam is that prophet of Allah. One of the greatest prophets of Allah. Allah gave him this stick and with this stick, when he used to hold it in his hand, it used to be a stick. And when he used to drop it to the ground, this stick used to turn into a serpent. With this very stick, he points towards the ocean and the ocean makes way and Musa alayhi salam and his people make the crossing. In spite of the fact, Musa alayhi salam being the prophet of Allah, the one who conversed with the almighty Allah, Allah says every soul shall taste death and he's departed from this world. You have the likes of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet of Allah. Such is the status of this Prophet that his name is written on the palaces of Jannah. His name is written on the eyes of angels. His name is written on the leaves of the Tuba tree. Such is the status of this Prophet that Allah raises his mention. Allah says that his character is sublime. Allah says he's a mercy for mankind. In spite of him being the final messenger, the seal of all prophets, in spite of him being the Imam of all the prophets before him, Allah says every soul shall taste death and he departs from this world. You have the great Imam al-Bukhari and the great Imam al-Bukhari was that muhaddis that he had memorized 10 million hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And regarding Imam al-Bukhari, in spite of his super fast memory, in spite of his super quick tongue of his, Allah says every soul shall taste death and he departs from this world. You have the great Imam Ahmad who had memorized one million hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who knew the biographies of every single narrator. He knew the fatawa of the Sahaba, the fatawa of the Tabi'een, and the fatawa of the Atbaw Tabi'een. But in spite of the fact that he was given the title, the Imam of the world, Allah says, every soul shall taste death and he departs from this world. And from the Kuffar, you have Nimrud. Nimrud was that person that Allah, the Almighty, brought him into existence. Allah, the Almighty, gave him everything. As Ibn Kathir writes, that four people have ever ruled the world, two being from the Muslims and two being from the Kuffar. The ones from the Muslims, Sulaiman alayhi salam, and Zulqanayn, and from the Kuffar, 
Nimrud and Bukti Nasr. And Nimrud, Allah ordered the winds to throw him into a jungle when he was a baby. And when he was thrown in a jungle, Allah ordered the trees to shade him. Yet again, the Almighty Allah blessed him so much that Allah, the Almighty, gave him such blessing that he ordered the jinns to teach him how to rule the world. And he became the ruler of the world. And you know how he repaid the Almighty Allah? The messenger comes to Nimrud and he says to Nimrud, Believe in Allah. And he says, Too right, I'm going to be, believe in Allah. You believe in me. I am your Lord Most High. In spite of the fact he being the ruler of the world, Allah says, Every soul shall taste death. Mosquitoes come, they eat half of his army. Allah sends a mosquito. This mosquito goes through his ear, lands on his brain, and eats off his brain. He eats off his brain until Nimrud drops to his knees. Allah says, every soul shall taste death and he drops. You have the likes of Fir'aun, the biggest Zalim that ever walked on the face of this planet. He used to spare the women. He used to kill the newborns. In spite of him being the biggest Zalim on the face of this earth, Allah says, every soul shall taste death. The oceans open. Fir'aun boasting that I have done this for you. This is from me. They try making the crossing. Allah orders the ocean to close on him. Allah says every soul shall taste death. And down goes Fir'aun. You have the people of Ard. And who were these people? They were giants. You have big giants. And regarding these giants, the narration says that they were so strong. They were so strong that as Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, the amount of weight that they used to pick up, if 500 of us got together and tried moving an inch, we will not be able to do so. And regarding them, they used with their own hands, with their bare hands, they used to make their houses from mountains. In spite of their super size and super power, Allah says every soul shall taste death and they depart from this world. How? Allah sends tornadoes and he destroys them. You have the likes of Jibra'il and Jibra'il alayhi salam regarding him. He's got 60,000 wings. In spite of his 60,000 wings, in spite of him being the archangel, the main angel, he lifts a city up. He takes you up to the lowest heaven. So close that the narrations say that the angels heard the dogs barking and the chickens croaking. And Jibra'il turned the city and he destroys them. In spite of his mighty power and mighty size and mighty role, Allah says everything will come to an end and they will come to an end. You have the angels who are carrying Allah's throne and the ones who are carrying Allah's throne, the narration says that the distance between their feet and their knees is a distance of 500 years and distance between the earlobe and the neck is a distance of 70 years. And in spite of the fact that they being the arch, the big angels who are carrying Allah's throne, that their feet are on the lowest earth and their shoulders are in the highest heaven. The distance between the first heaven is the distance of 500 years. The distance between the first and the second, 500 years. Second to the third, 500 years. Third to the fourth, 500 years. Fourth to the fifth, 500 years. Fifth to the sixth, 500 years. Sixth to the seventh, 500 years. Could you imagine how big these angels are? Yet again, Allah says, everything will come to an end and they will come to an end. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will die the way you live. If you live the life of disobedience, if you live the life of sin, then you will die the same way and you will be resurrected the way you die. A police officer working in a Muslim country he writes to a scholar and he says that my return to the Almighty Allah 
his return to the Almighty Allah, he writes, one occasion we were on a highway and we were parked up on the hard shoulder and all of a sudden everything's quiet. Me and my partner, we were talking. He says moments pass and all of a sudden there was a big bank. The officer writes and when we look when we looked behind us, what did we see? A head-on collision. There was a head-on collision. He says, we were running towards the car and we found two young lads. We took these two young lads out and we put them on the side. We were running to help the other guy in the other car. But what did we find? That he was dead. And when we returned, back to these two, you, two young lads. We asked the young lads that who are you? Yet again, there was no reply. My partner start instructing them that say La ilaha illallah. Say La ilaha illallah. But there was no reply. Yet again, my partner start instructing him say La ilaha illallah. Yet again, there was no reply. And when he repeated it again, it said, the Mapana instructed them to say, La ilaha illallah. Yet again, there was no reply. And at this moment, as the Prophet wasallam said, you will die the way you live. If you live the life of disobedience, if you live the life of sin, you will die the same way. And when he was on the verge of dying, instead of uttering, Kalima la ilaha illallah. He starts singing a satanic song. He starts singing a satanic song. He says, shocked by this. My partner starts instructing him again. Say la ilaha illallah. Yet again, the same thing. Both young lads were singing a satanic song. The Prophet Sallallahu said, you will die the way you live. If you live the life of disobedience, if you live the life of sin, listening to music, then you'll die the same way and you'll be resurrected the way you die. He says moments pass. Waiting for the ambulance, the first one dies without the kalima la ilaha illallah. And the second one, dies without the kalima la ilaha illallah knowing that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever says la ilaha illallah at the time of his death he will enter jannah knowing that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever says la ilaha illallah at the time of his death then the fire of hell will be made haram upon this person a second incident A woman writes that could you explain to me that did my husband die a good death or did he die as a bad death? She writes that one occasion, me and my husband, we were sitting down on the sofa and watching a football match. We were watching a football match because my husband really loved football and he was a supporter of Alan Shearer and he used to love Alan Shearer. On his clothes, he used to have an autograph by Alan Shearer. In his bedroom, he used to have pictures of Alan Shearer. He used to have cards of Alan Shearer. She says one evening when my husband and I we were sitting down and my husband said that my back is hurting and my legs have become weak. She says I phoned the ambulance. I phoned the ambulance and after about 20 minutes the ambulance arrives. They bring a stretcher in. 
And when they bore a stretcher in, they put this, my husband on the stretcher. And when they put my husband on the stretcher, my husband grabbed my hands. And when he grabbed my hands, he said to me, look after the children. I said to my husband, that you, 20 minutes you will be in the hospital and you will be back out. And what happens? They go towards the ambulance. And when they jumped in the ambulance, she says, my husband was looking at the house. It was like if he's not going to return. And the ambulance took us to the hospital. And when they took us to hospital, took us to the hospital and they checked my husband and he found out that he was dying of cancer. And the cancer was so severe that he had reached his brain. The Prophet wasallam said, you will die the way you live. If you lived a life of disobedience, if you lived a life of sin, you will die the same way and you will be resurrected the way you die. She says that they put the machines on my husband and they said that your husband's only going to last for another few days or maybe a couple of days or maybe a few hours. So make the most of it. She says that I sat next to my husband holding his hands and I instructed him to say, La ilaha illallah. She says, my husband start looking at the window and all of a sudden he start laughing. He start laughing. His laugh was so loud that the nurses came in, the doctors came in. And when the doctors came in, she says, my husband's body from the middle lifted and he started screaming, start saying, Amal and Shira, Amal and Shira, Amal and Shira. The machines turn off. The Prophet wasallam said, you will die the way you live. If you live the life of disobedience, if you live the life of sin, then you will die the same way. May Allah save us. An Arab working in a Muslim country, a doctor, he says working on a ward where there was many patients and there was one patient that was suffering from kidney failure and he had a couple of days to live. The doctor says that prior to few days before his death, his face turned blue. His eyes were bulging out and he was making a gargling noise from his throat. It was like if someone was strangling him. The doctor says that moments passed that the noise from his throat became so loud that the patients who were around him begin begun to flee. The doctor says we had to seclude him. We had to seclude him in a separate room. And when we secluded him in a separate room, we found his father. And upon arrival of his father, his father says, looking at the condition of his son, he says, oh doctor, is there any medicine that you give my child? The doctor says that he's dying of kidney failure. There is no cure. He says, they give him some medicine that you could put his life to an end. Why? Because I cannot bear watching him going through this pain. Why? Because his face had turned blue. His eyes were bulging out and he was making a gargling noise. It's like someone was strangling him from his throat. He says, moments passed. The father held his hand and instructed him Say la ilaha illallah. Yet again, there was no reply. And he dies upon without reciting the kalima la ilaha illallah. The Prophet said that remember a lot 
keep on remembering the terminator of pleasures and that is death just as brothers today on the alam rock road they will say that what is this kalima la ilaha this don't mean nothing to me as the one of the brothers on alam rock road there were some few brothers who were doing a da'wah stall on alam rock road and there was a young lad who was driving a, a car and he was blasting his music and when he parked up one of the brothers went to him and he said to him my brother please turn the music low he says who are you to tell me to turn the music low monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday i work saturday sunday i want to drive up and down and blast my music too right the brother instructed him come learn about islam he says f islam this is his words and he gets out the car and the brother said to him like have some respect for the kalima look on the stool look on the front sheet what does he say he says the kalima he goes brother this don't mean nothing to me it's only a piece of paper let me tell you the value of this piece of paper never mind just being a piece of paper this is the very thing that will take him to jannah the hadith ruku by imam tirmizi in his sunnah he goes, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that on the day of judgment Allah will raise everyone from the beginning of time till the end of time every single person will be resurrected from Adam right till the day of judgment every single person will be resurrected and the scenery on that day will be my brothers that you will see some people who will be sweating up to their ankles some will be sweating up to their knees some will be sweating up to their waist some will be sweating up to their chest some will be sweating up to their collarbones and some will be drowned in their own sweat on that day you will see people that their bodies will be split into two halves you'll see on that day people will be walking on their faces you'll see people on that day they will be blind you will see people on that day that their private parts will be on their face and blood and pus will flow from it you will see on that day the one who takes his intoxicants will be wrapped the intoxicants will be wrapped around his neck you will see some people that may be made small as ants you'll see other people who have no arms you have other people the snakes will be wrapped around their neck you'll have other people that thumbs will be down towards their waist the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there will be a servant of allah on that day there will be a servant of allah and this servant has committed so much sins so much sins that he had been he had recorded 99 registers and one register is so big as far as the human eye could see this is how big one register is and he had committed every single sin in the book the almighty allah will pick this person up it will put him in front of allah he will be in front of allah on that day there'll be no barrier between him and allah there'll be no veil between him and allah there'll be no curtain between him and allah Allah will question him and he has to answer. Allah will say that you have committed so much sins that you had recorded 99 registers. Tell me, have you committed all the sins? He will say, Allah has committed all the sins. Allah will say, maybe by mistakes my angels wrote something else. He will say, Oh Allah, my, your angels have wrote exactly what I did the Allah will say to him that you, you did one good deed you did one good deed and you know what this deed was he testified he testified that there's only one Allah and this piece of paper will be bought to him and when this piece of paper will be bought to him 
The people behind him will think that why is this piece of paper compared to the sins he has committed? 99 registers. One register is so big as far as the human eye could see. Allah will order the angels to take this piece of paper and the registers to the place of weighing. The 99 registers will be placed on one pan of the balance and this paper will be placed on the other pan of the balance. This paper will outweigh the 99 registers. This is the value of this piece of paper. This is the value of Iman. It's a diamond of all diamonds. It's a jewel in the crown. It's a diamond that cannot be priced. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the hadith recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, that the angel of death, it visits a person five times a day. In other narrations, seven times. In other narrations, two times. Another narration, three times. And the great Imam Qurtubi says that the angel call out in the morning and they say, O oh men of 40, take provision. Take provision. Do good deeds before it's too late. Yet again, when a person reaches the age of 50, the angels call out and they say, O oh men of 50, O oh men of 50, your time is coming to an end. Your life is coming to an end. Repent before it's too late. Yet again, when a person reaches the age of 60, the angels call out and they say, O oh men of 60, have you forgotten the punishment of Allah? Have you forgotten the Almighty Allah? Have you forgotten that you're going to meet the Almighty Allah? Remember one, that on that day there will be no helpers. And when a person lives a life of disobedience, lives a life of sin, as the hadith of Tamim Udari says, that the angel will come in the most awful of forms to this Fasik, to this Fajr, to this Kafir, to this Munafik. It will come in the most awful of forms. As Imam Qurtubi says, that the angel of death is so frightening, is so scary, that all the angels in the heaven fear the angel of death more than one of you fears a lion, fears a beast. And when the angel of death, when it comes to a Fajr, when it comes to a Kafir, when it comes to a Munafiq, when it comes to a Zalim, it will come in such form that his feet will be on the ground and his head will be in the heaven. Twelve eyes, black of face, fire leaping out from his mouth, coming out from his nose. He'll have a forked iron rod made out of fire. He'll have 500 angels behind him with whips and embers made out of fire. And when it comes to a Fajr, when it comes to a Kafir, when it comes to a Munafiq, or when it comes to a Zalim, there's no addressing with Assalamu Alaikum. The angel of death will strike him with his forked iron rod. And this forked iron rod will enter his body. And when he enters his body, he'll enter every single vein, every single joint. As Abdullah says, Radiallahu Anhu, that when this fourth iron rod is struck on him and he enters every single vein, every single joint, it will reach the heart and it will tear the veins from the heart. And that time the person becomes insane, he becomes mad. And then the angel of death begins to twist it. He begins to twist it. And when he begins to twist it, causes the veins in the heart to burst. And then the angel of death will start taking his soul out. Starting from his feet, stopping at his ankle. The body will faint. And when he comes back around, 
500 angels will come with whips and embers made out of fire and they will beat him. And then the angel of death will take the soul out from the ankle to the knees. Yet again, he will faint. And when he comes back around, 500 angels with whips and embers made of fire, they will beat him. <coughs> and then the angel of death will take his soul out from his knees to his waist. Yet again, he will faint. And when he comes back around, 500 angels with whips and embers made out of fire, they will beat him. And then from the waist to the chest, the angel of death will rip his soul out. And the body will swoon. He will faint. And when he comes back around, 500 angels with whips and embers made out of fire, they will beat him. And then the angel of death, he will take the soul out from the chest to the collarbone. Yet again, the body will, he will, he will faint. The body will faint. He will fall in a swoon. 500 angels will come with whips and embers made out of fire and they will beat him. And when he comes back around, the angel of death, he will put this ember made out of fire underneath his neck and he will say to him, come out to the fire of hell where there's scorching winds, scolding water, shadow of black smoke, no cool, no refreshing. And then the, body, the soul will be ripped out. And once the soul is ripped out, out of the body, what will happen? The body and the soul will begin to fight. And the army of Iblis will be celebrating. They will be celebrating. And then the coffin from the fire of hell will be bore rough, rigid. It will be bore from the fire of hell. And this person will be wrapped around it. And then the body will be lifted by the angels from the heaven. They will come down and they will lift his body. And when the body is lifted, every place where he committed sin, where they was in Bullring, where they was in Palisades, where they was in Falls Hill, where they was in Coventry, where they was on Alam Rock Road, all the places will speak out and they will say, good readings, you got rid of this disgusting soul. And the angels will take this soul and they will take him to the first heaven. And on the way, they will be calling him by the most disgusting of names that has been ever been called on the dunya. And when he reaches the first heaven, the angel will say, who is this impure, stinky, smelly, disgusting soul? And the angel will reply, the son of so-and-so. And then, regarding the disbeliever, the Prophet sallallahu recited the verse of the Quran and he says, never would a kafir enter Jannah until a camel enters the eye of a needle. Would a camel ever enter the eye of a needle? Never. And then, a voice is called from the heavens and it will be said, write his name in the scrolls of hell and his body will be thrown down and now is time of the grave. The hadith recorded by Imam al-Bukhari Asma ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu anha she says one occasion one occasion I headed towards the masjid, masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and all of a sudden the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was giving a sermon and when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was giving a sermon there was an uproar and you know what this uproar was? they were the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam they were crying and you know why they were crying? 
Asma ibn Abi Bakr radiyallahu anha she says they are asked the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she says I asked him may Allah be pleased with you tell me what was the last thing that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say she says that the companion of messenger, the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed me that the last thing that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said before this crime was that you will go through fitna in your grave similar to the fitna of the Antichrist and the likes of Umar being Amir al -Mu'mineen, so brave he was, so strong he was. Umar, one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says that we were with Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu on an occasion, we were taking a janazah to a graveyard. And when we reached the graveyard, Umar ibn Khattab, he walked in and he began to cry and he sat next to an old grave. I mean, he sat next to an old grave. He says, I went to him. I went to Umar, Amir al Mu'mineen. Tell me what makes you cry? What makes you so sad? He says that the grave has addressed me. I went near the grave, and the grave has addressed me. And the grave has said to me, Though Amir al Mu'mineen, why don't you ask me regarding those people who are inside me? Oh, Umar, do you know what I do with them? Do you know what I do with them? I dismember their bodies into pieces. I take away their shrouds, I tear away their shrouds. I suck out all their blood. And I devour their flesh. Oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, do you know what I do with the joints? I dislocate the shoulders from the arms, the arms from the forearms, and the forearms from the wrist. The hips from the waist, the thighs from the knees, the knees from the shin, the shin from the ankles. This is why Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu was crying. Because he reminded him of the grave and the grave addressed him. And Umar being a strong man, he begins to cry. Tears were flowing from his eyes. And now, when the soul is in the grave, the grave will say, your coming is evil. I'm displeased to meet you. Out of all those people that passed me, you were the one. You were the one I hated most. You have come to me today. Today I will show you how I will treat you. And when the soul is in the grave, the Prophet وسلم, said that the grave would become dark and at that time the grave will squash him. The grave will squash him and his ribs will interlace. And then the angels as Jibra'il says they will come in the grave. And you know what their description is? Their eyes flash like the flash of lightning. Their voices rumble like thunder. The canine teeth looks like the bull's horns. And when they speak, fire comes out. And they've got a hammer with them so heavy, they've every single person on the face of this earth got together and tried moving an inch of this hammer, they would not be able to do so. And then these angels will come to this person, this Fajr, in such a manner, in such a manner, that the person in the grave, his body will begin to shake, his bones will crackle, his limbs will move from his places, and he will faint. Yet again, the angels will approach him in such a manner, they will make him sit again. They will make him sit again, and they will say to him, You have left the world. Yet again, his bones, his body will begin to shake. His bones will crackle. His limbs will move from his places. And he will fall again. 
Yet again, the angels will come to him again. At this time, yet again, they will approach him in such a manner that his bones will begin to shake. His limbs will move from his places. And the angels will grab him and they'll make him sit. And they'll say, you have left the world and you have come to your temporary station. Answer our questions. Tell us, who is your Allah? Who is your Lord? And the person will say, why? Because he lived a life of disobedience. He lived a life of sin. Living a life, chilling out, cruising around with the boys. He had no time for Allah. And the angels will say, they will pose the second question to him and they'll say, What is your deen? Yet again, he will say, I do not know. Why? Because he lived a life of disobedience. He lived a life of sin, living a life, cruising around with the boys. He didn't know what deen was because he was too busy in Palisades, in Bullring, in Coventry, in Falls Hill. He had no time for Allah. And then we say, and the third question will be fired by the angels. Who was this man who was sent amongst you? Yet again, he will say, I do not know. Why? Because his role models were Tupac. His role model was 50 Cent. His role model was Jay-Z. He followed this now. The gold rings, the funny haircuts, the dodgy clothes. He didn't know, he didn't follow the sunnah of Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He didn't know what sunnah was. And he would say, I do not know. And the angels would say, is that the case? They will grab this fork, they will grab this hammer, this steel hammer, and they will strike him. And they'll give him such a beating, such a beating, that his grave will be full of fire. His grave will be full of fire. And then the angel will say, look above you. Look above you. And what would he see? The gates open towards the Jannah. And the angels will say, oh enemy of Allah, this would have been your abode if you worshipped Allah. Then the angels will say, look beneath you. And when he looks beneath him, what would he see? The gates open towards the fire of hell. And the angel will say, Oh enemy of Allah, Oh enemy of Allah, your abode, this is your abode. Because you were the quick one to disobey Allah. This is your abode. And then the punishment carries on. The hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu says, 99 serpents will be posted in his grave. One serpent is so poisonous that if it hisses towards the world, nothing will grow on the earth. And they will sting him and keep on stinging him right to the day of judgment. The hadith of Amr, it says a blind and deaf tormentor will be posted in his grave. Blind, so he cannot see. Deaf, so he cannot hear. And he'll have a hammer with him so heavy, that if every single person got together and tried moving an inch, they would not be able to, to, able to do so. And they would grab this hammer, this hammer is made out of steel. And this hammer, if he struck the biggest mountain, it will put the mountain into dust. And this tormentor will torment him right till the day of judgment. And different punishments happen for different people. As you have people today, who use the thumb, the tongue, who use their hands for the wrong cause. Regarding these people, there'll be a surprise for them in the grave. As the narration says, that there'll be a man in the grave. He'll have a hook made out of steel. And this person, He'll be made to lie down on the floor. He'll be made to lie down on the floor. And this person who's above him, he will grab this 
hook and he will strike him in his eyes and he will rip his eyes down towards his neck and then they will grab this hook they will strike him in his mouth and rip his mouth down towards his neck and then the man will come again with this hook and will strike his face and will rip his cheeks apart and the punishment will carry on right on the day of judgment and Allah will reform his face and the punishment will begin again as the Prophet wasallam said that when this person gets punished in the grave every single thing besides man and jinn hears his scream And regarding that person who slanders, who backbites, who puts accusations against people, whether it's in the form of internet, whether it's in the form of a mobile, whether it's in the form of telling each other, making gossips, regarding this person, this person, the Prophet ﷺ said, they'll have nails made out of copper. And he'll be scratching his face up and he will scratch his skin off and will scratch his eyes up and then we will grab this copper and he will start scratching his mouth until his face does not remain and the punishment will carry on right in the day regarding those people who abandon salah the five daily prayers who does not pray who's forgot about his prayer regarding this person as Imam al-Bukhari says that he'll be made to do ablution with boiling water and when this boiling water touches his skin his skin will fall off and he'll be made to pray on a mat made out of fire in the grave and his grave worms and insects will eat off his body and the person who knows the Quran but does not obey it regarding this person he'll be in his grave and a person will have a big rock on him and he will smash this rock on his head and he will crush his head in other narrations it will crush his body as well and regarding those other people who live a life of disobedience who live a life of sin the one who commits zina the adulterer the adulteress regarding these people he'll be made or she will be made to sleep on clay and fire will come from underneath it that will force the body against the walls and other narrations the stones made out of fire will be thrown at this person and the punishments carry on and the one who takes interest deals and wheels with interest deals and wheels with interest regarding this person He'll be made to swim in a river made out of blood. In other narrations, made out of tar. And then every time he wants to get out, there'll be a person standing at the bank. And he will grab this stone, this rock he'll have in his hand. And he will smash it in his face, breaking his teeth. And the person will swim again and the punishment will carry on right to the day of judgment different people have different punishments in the grave according to the sins that they commit according to the sins that they commit they'll get punished in the grave as Jalaluddin Siyuti writes the bad endings without the kalima la ilaha illallah is a fool number one delaying salah Never mind delaying Salah, 
who pray the five daily prayers. Number two, troubling the Muslims. Number three, taking intoxicants. Number four, is regarding that person. That person who disobeys and swears at his mother and disrespects his parents. I conclude by saying that Allah give me the ability to act upon what is being said. As I pray to the Almighty Allah, that Allah wake me up first. As I pray to the Almighty Allah, that let's wake up before we never wake up. May Allah give me the ability to act upon what has been said. May Allah give you the ability. Wa akhiru da'wana. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.